Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today we're going to be building us an outdoor coffee table for some Adirondack chairs. Now I couldn't find enough cedar at my local hardwood, hardwood dealership. So I went to the big box store and got some Douglas fir and here I'm just cutting them down rough size. So I got this idea from King's Fine Woodworking, his Adirondack chairs and coffee table. I saw his and his is just a little too big so I wanted to make mine a little bit smaller and I didn't need the plan to this of going off his look so here i'm just cutting these down to three and a half inch to make them like a regular two by four and i'm cutting these at a seven and a half degree angle because i want them to be tapered some where they go in give it a little bit more fancier look just like his did his is two foot by four foot and that's just a little too big so i'm going for 22 and a half inch by 36 inch so here i'm cutting the tapers on all four legs you got a little stop block so i know everything's the same and just like that, so you can kind of see. Make sure it'll be flat. And here I got my little jig back out to give these a tapered edge. Now, last video I was saying tamper. Nobody's called me out yet, so I appreciate that. But I'm giving these a tapered edge here. So we're two inches at the bottom to nothing at the top, so three and a half inch. So that one there is real time with that blade stop. And just like that, pull that one out. And I'm not even clamping these down. I just got that stop block on the back to hold it in place. Slide it in there. And push her through. Beautiful. Alright, and then for the skirt, for underneath, it's going to be two and three quarters of an inch. So I'm cutting those down. And then for the frame around the top, I'm going to go two and a half inch. So you'll see me cutting those down here. And I'm cutting everything oversized because I will run them through the planer like I do everything to get the right thickness and the right width. So everything's the same. And then for all the little slats in between the frame, I'm going to go right at two inches. But after I'm done planing, it became just over an inch and seven eighths. And I believe I cut 12 of those. I cut 14, but I used 12. So you'll see that coming up. And just like that, I got all the pieces cut. So here's cutting 45s to make the frame for the tabletop. Like I said, it's going to be 22 inches wide and 36 inches long. And then I set up a little stop block right here, square up the edges. These are going to be the pieces in the middle. And because they're two and a half inch frame, it's going to be 17 inch little slats in between. Or 17 inch. Yeah, two and a half, two and a half is five. 17 is 22, but yeah. Alrighty, so there you saw I'm doing these loose tenons like I do in most of my projects with my little jig. And I didn't want these to twist during glue up or anything, so I'm going to put two loose tenons in each piece. So I ran them all through one direction. I got it in about three-eighths of an inch. Flip it back over and run it through the other direction. It'll be three-eighths of an inch from that side, and then we'll have two loose tenons on every little piece, which you'll see here. If I hurry up and move. I do really like this jig. It's nowhere near as fast as a domino, but it really gets the job done and it comes out looking clean. Look at that. Beautiful. I was trying to count there. I think there's 12 of them in there. And then all the pieces, put up a little stop block here and just route it out, turn it, flip it over, route, turn. So each little piece will get four holes. And just like that, there you go. And then on the top, I'm just giving it a 1 8 inch chamfer just on all the edges on the inside. I believe uh, James King did that also on his, just kind of hide the edges with the joints and give it a little decorative look. And now I'm going to go ahead and take the time before I glue anything up and give everything a nice little sand over. The good thing about outdoor furniture is you don't have to be as cautious with the sanding. You can go to about 150 or so. Drink some coffee, blow everything off, get it nice and clean, and then as always, do a little dry fit. After I made all my little tenons for this thing. 
And at this point, when I start thinking like this, is going to be a booger to glue up all these little tenons. So each miter at the 45 gets two tenons, and then each little slat gets two tenons. So I didn't do the math, but it's quite a bit. And here, just the different color variations of the wood. I'm trying to get a nice little pattern, knock everything over. I don't know why I picked this back up because I eventually realized it'd be easier to put the top on once it's laid down. But we get her done. And I remind you, this is still the dry fit, just to make sure. So. In my mind, I was thinking this is going to be fun with glue, but I did use Type Bond 3 because this is going to be an outdoor project, and plus Type Bond 3 has a really long work time, so wasn't too bad at all. So now that everything went on there good, I'm going to go ahead and clamp it down and make sure it's going to square up nice, and everything should fit good. And I'll give you a little preview of what the top's going to look like. Here in a second after I rub on it. There we go. So roughly like that. And you can see the little chamfers on every little piece. And in the meantime, before I do the actual glue up, I went and gave these a little chamfered edge on them, just hoping that it would help help everything go together more smooth and not fighting with square pegs. So as usual, spread glue everywhere. Take just a random stick, smear it around. Get all the loose tenons wet. And there we go, lay it down, tons of clamps, and start cleaning all the glue squeeze out. This leaves about a five eighth of an inch gap in between all of them, so you're able to get in there pretty good. So clean up all the glue, make sure it's square. All the slats are standing square so you don't have anything off. And here I start figuring out where I want my legs underneath to go, and I think I ended up cutting them. I cut them on a 45 on each side, but first I put this little 1 8 inch channel in there for the Z fasteners to hold the top down. I gave the bottom a pretty heavy chamfer on it. So there you can see I went around one time just to prevent tear out, and then I went pretty deep on it, and I don't know exactly if it's a half inch, three quarter, or what, but give it a pretty good size chamfer and then I flip it over and give it the 1 8 inch maybe a quarter inch on the top so it's got a large one on the bottom and a small one on the top but anyways back to those legs I believe the side pieces are 17 and a half inch and the long pieces for the skirt are 31 and a half inch and both ends of those get 45s because the legs are going to sit in there at a 45 which you will see so here you see me doing the top Give everything a good once over by hand. Looking nice, looking right. Butamus. And just like that, there they are. So you can see the 45s on them and then how the legs are going in. I just put screws from the inside into the piece and on the outside of the long pieces, I put screws through there and I will be plugging those, which you will see. So you can see how everything's just 45 in there. And the little Z fasteners will just sit right in there and find a slat to sit on. And this will be outside, so it's going to move around, but this should not be a problem at all. It'll hold it down. I'm only putting four, and this is really sturdy. So if it swells, it'll just make it tighter. And just like that, that top is on. And see, so you can't see any screws there, but there you can see the holes on the outside, which no big deal. Throw some plugs in them. See there? Looky there. Nice little plug. Yep, and just like magic, the plugs have now been cut and sanded down, and here is our finished table. I say finished. It's a completed table. It just needs to be finished. But I'm not going to put finish on this thing until I build the chairs so I can finish everything all together. So one more slight sand by hand, and then throw some finish on this some oil finish and we will be done but I do appreciate y'all staying around watching me build this thing super simple one day build not bad at all so thanks for watching stay tuned stay tuned to see the chairs and this thing finished and everything oiled up lubed up and ready to go appreciate y'all thank y'all for watching please subscribe